Well, the Saputo name is well known in this country. The dairy giant is one of Canada's great success stories. What started as a modest family business has grown into a global empire. Lino Saputo Jr. has spent much of his life on that journey, and he's been named Canada's outstanding CEO of the year for 2019. He'll be honored tonight in Toronto at an event that I'll be hosting. And ahead of that, he's been kind enough to join us here in studio. Thanks very much for being here, and congratulations. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. This is, I mentioned your own journey. I mean, you were a kid when you started working at the company. What, what was your first job at Saputo? So at 13 years old, uh, I, was, uh, I went to work with my dad, and they had me pack the cheeses. And then uh, over time, I was able to get into the plant, into the facility. Uh, and uh, uh, back then, with a very little experience, they had me wash the vats after production. And over time, I learned how to make the cheese. Uh, and over time, then I grew uh, into different responsibilities with the organization. There, there are a number of family success stories that we often talk about um, here in Canada. Uh, yours is, is a great example of that. I, I know in the past you, you've talked about the legacy there. Yes. Um, what your grandfather and father were building and how that, that inspires you to work harder because of what has been built. So how do you approach this job as CEO? Well, it's very simple. You know, I look at myself as a caretaker for the next generation. Uh, you know, when I took over from my father in 2004, I didn't think it was going to be a revolution. It was going to be an evolution. Uh, and so we're very, very fortunate that we've got a very, very strong uh, corporate culture. Uh, you know, a, 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 a culture and, and a dynamic that focuses first and foremost on people and operational excellence. So that wasn't going to change. Now, as we evolved, of course, we got into different geographies, we got into different uh, parts of the world, but the fundamental base of our character really hasn't changed over, over 65 years. And so I inherited a very good, strong organization. Uh, I didn't want to mess that up. So as we talk about that evolution, I mean, there's a lot of big themes we're hearing from executives today, uh, issues like the environment yes. and social impact yes. that probably weren't discussed as much at the boardroom level go back 10 years, certainly 20 years ago. And that is so true. You know, uh, back then uh, when my father my, and my grandfather started the business, their primary focus was to survive. You know, they need to manufacture a product that a market wanted, sell the product, collect on the receivables, and then uh, have uh, funds to buy milk again the next day. Uh, and as things evolve, of course, we need to understand that there's got to be some purpose to the profit. Uh, and so this is, uh, you know, my generation now, this is what we have to be concerned about as CEOs. Uh, we need to make sure that we're doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Uh, and so uh, we launched uh, uh, over the course of the last couple of years the Saputo Promise, and more recently our initiatives for, uh, you know, our, our uh, social responsibility with respect to environment. And so we're focusing on water, waste, and climate, uh, and we're making some commitments. So there has to be a, an end game uh, to just, uh, 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 you know, operating the business on a very, very effective uh, basis. So where would you weigh in on, on something like the anti-pipeline protests we've been talking about today? Obviously, there are some who are, who, who are protesting. They have concerns, environmental concerns. You're running a business. Obviously, if we're talking about disruption to the movement of goods across the country, that can create a challenging um, situation for any business. How do you approach that? Yeah, well, I think you need to look at uh, getting product to market. Uh, but there is a good, sustainable way to do that. Uh, now, it's very possible we don't have all the answers today, but as long as we have the will to want to get to those answers uh, and we're prepared to invest in them, then I think we can find the right solutions. Uh, and so for us, when we're thinking about uh, manufacturing products, of course, we need to use energy. Uh, there's water usage. How do we minimize the amount of energy? How do we minimize the amount of water? Uh, and uh, again, maybe we may not have all the answers today, but if we are committed to the journey, uh, then I think that we can find the right answers as we move along. So this business has grown extensively over the last two decades, uh, so many acquisitions. And, and while we're talking about this key issue right now in Canada, you're operating in a lot of different countries yes. that have their own issues. Uh, you're, you're in Australia, obviously that was a big growth area for you. Right. But obviously they're having their own debate around these same issues. They're dealing with the wildfires. How do you navigate through that, the fact that this is a global company and the conversations in each country are different? They are different. Uh, part of the benefit of that, too, is expanding into different geographies where they're a little bit more advanced than we are. We just made an acquisition in the UK. Uh, their environmental concerns are much more advanced than what we have here in North America. And so they're, they've been on this journey already for the last 10 years. And so there are certain things that we pick up through these acquisitions that we can apply to other platforms that are more uh, historical for us and just advance 
uh, our progress that much quicker. Do you think, um, I mean, that's on the environmental side, but in terms of things that you're learning about how competitive our country is yeah. on this journey, going around the world and growing your business, do you think that Canada could be more competitive? I think Canada could be more competitive, and I think Canada is very competitive. I mean, we generate uh, uh, and, and develop great entrepreneurs here in Canada. Uh, and so I think, yes, there's no reason why Canada should not be uh, competitive. Uh, it's just a regulatory issue sometimes need to, you know, uh, take a step back to allowing the entrepreneurs uh, to progress in their respective fields. So uh, it's a business that is growing extensively, but as the CEO, you have to make decisions, decisions for the future. Um, you had announced some plant closures yes. scheduled for later this year and early 2021. Yeah. What led to those decisions and, and, and what does it say about where the company is going? So the market dynamics, uh, our industry continues to grow. We're growing at a rate of about two, two and a half percent per year. So we're in a growth mode. Dairy is not dead. And that's not the reason why we close those facilities. But we need to be efficient, we need to be effective, and we need to be relevant to our consumers. And so when you have uh, CapEx allocations in very old uh, plants uh, that perhaps might even be redundant, then we have to think about where we're going to allocate those resources in order to be able to have bigger, stronger platforms that are more effective and more efficient. And so that's the reasoning for those plant closures. And we have announced in the past other plant closures that make us more efficient and more effective. Very, very tough decisions for us to take, but it's for the uh, sustainability and the viability of our business moving forward. You mentioned dairy is not dead, but boy, we've seen this big market phenomenon um, in a lot of food products yeah. around plant-based products. We saw high-profile IPO and Beyond yes. Meat. We've spoken to Michael McCain of Maple Leaf about their push into plant-based products, and plant-based milk is a new area. It's an area of opportunity for your business as well, and you've yeah. talked a little bit about the roadmap ahead. Can you shed some light on the acquisition front and what Saputo's general strategy is going to be there? So, so milk is just one category of the dairy spectrum uh, that we manufacture. Uh, and on that side, yes, there are consumers that are looking for products other than cow's milk. Uh, we've gotten into goat uh, uh, dairy products and other uh, forms of beverages. Um, and so our take on this is that we have the infrastructure, we have the expertise to be able to manufacture efficiently and effectively. Why not co-pack for others who have brands? And so we are going in that direction. Uh, but for other categories of dairy, uh, in the cheese, in the dairy powders, in the infant formulas, uh, there's no better, no better solid in the world than dairy proteins. Uh, and so we still believe in that, even though we can venture into uh, where the trends are going. We, uh, outside of our, our conversations with you, I, I can't remember the, the biggest conversation we've had uh, on, on, on cheese outside of like CETA, the, that new deal obviously between Canada and, and Europe to, uh, to, to see more movement of goods. Uh, you've talked in the past uh, about that trade deal. What do you think it says about the kinds of trade deals we might see uh, involving Canada in the future? Well, I like globalization. I, I like the fact that we're, you know, we're opening up ourselves to a, a, a global market. Uh, in the CETA deal specifically, we have assets uh, in Europe and we could import, if we're granted those licenses, we could import value-added products that I think will be a benefit to consumers. So I don't want to shy away from these uh, uh, trade negotiations or these uh, 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 trade uh, um, uh, opening up of markets somewhere down the road. Uh, I think that there's a great opportunity as long as we continue to think about creating value in our space. I did uh, quickly want to ask you just about Canada's supply management program for dairy farmers. You've talked a lot about it in the past, yeah. but because we're getting ready for this conservative leadership race, it's starting to come up again because you've got some candidates who are, who are talking about the, uh, the pros and cons of having it. How do you, what does the future look like, do you think? for supply management in this country? Well, you know, look, we have to think about the dairy farmers because they are the lifeblood of our industry. Without a happy or profitable dairy farmer, we don't have an industry. And the dairy farmers here in Canada like the milk supply managed system. We are not going to challenge that. We're not going to debate that. There are some positives to that where you've got some stability in pricing, uh, where you've got revenue streams for the dairy farmers that make their investment viable, uh, and that's okay. Uh, the downside, of course, is that there's limited growth. Uh, a company like Saputo, if we want uh, growth beyond the milk supply managed system, then we'll look at different platforms. That's why we're in the United States. That's why we're in the UK, we're in Australia, and we're in Argentina as a dairy processor. All right, before you go, yes. one thing people might not know about you, beyond being a big hockey fan, you're a pretty good goalie. 
Uh, I, I think I can hold my own, yes. And you like to say, as the CEO, the, po the puck <laughs> stops with you. I mean, That's right. What does that really mean, do you think? Well, that means, look, at the end of the day, you've got to work as a team, just like a, a, you know, a hockey team. You need the offensive guys to score. You need the defensive guys to you know, help you uh, take care of the rebounds. But at the end of the day, if the puck is in the net, that's on me, and I love that responsibility. So it's no different than being a CEO. You've got to work with the team, but at the end of the day, I've got to take those hard decisions to make sure uh, that uh, we are acting as a responsible organization. All right, Lino, congratulations. Thanks very much for stopping by. Thank you very much, and I'll see you tonight. Yeah, I'll see you later today. Lino Saputo, Jr., uh, Chair and CEO of Saputo, and as mentioned, the latest Canada's Outstanding CEO of the Year Award winner.